Hello, this is Peter Englander with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the November 2018 general election. We have invited all candidates who filed for the race. There are many reasons during busy campaign seasons for candidates accepting or being unable to appear. With me today is Chrissy Wrights, running for State Senator 26th District, District, who was able to accept our invitation. We're sorry that one of the candidates in the race, Chuck Thompson, has been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to visit the League of Women Voters of Oregon's website and to use the League's vote411.org site for comprehensive coverage where candidates may also choose to include more information, some including their own YouTube videos. So Chrissy, what is your top priority and how will you accomplish it? Thanks for having me today. Um, so I, I was a neonatal intensive care nurse for many years, and so healthcare is just very important to me. I know how important affordable, accessible healthcare is from the very beginning until the very end of life. And so um, for me, the key word there is accessible. Uh, or in Oregon, we do a pretty good job. We get about 95% of our people having affordable healthcare, but it's the access part that I'm really wanting to work on, making sure that we are bringing healthcare into rural areas. Um, through an example like a student-based health center at a school um, so that people really can access health care where they are and I, that's very very important especially in the rural parts of my district um, you know really making sure that we are not only reaching physical health for people but also mental health um, and again all the way from the beginning to the very end and the last thing about health care I really am concerned about is some of these cost drivers um, there was really good work done in the 2017 session um, around drug um, pricing transparency mm -hmm. I would love to get down to say and, and really use that data and information to make sure that Oregonians aren't paying too much for their prescription drugs. Okay, well, thank you. What steps will you take to ensure more Oregonians are qualified and hired for Oregon jobs? Um, so I am the chair of the Hood River County School Board right now, and so for me, I look at a lot of things through an education lens, and I think that education is vital when you're talking about jobs and qualified workers. What I would like to see us do is put more uh, stable funding, uh, more adequate funding, more stable funding into our schools, making sure that we are not only touching kids um, that are college bound and, and supporting that, junior college and, and four year college, but also making sure that we have programs in place that really support kids that want to go out into the workforce. Those career tech, those vocational training, trainings, those trades are part of our high school so that the kids are looking towards where they're going and, and they're looking towards jobs that are really good jobs and to tell you the truth the jobs we really need in Oregon um, making sure that uh, they're prepared when they get done with high school to really enter that workforce in a skilled way um, I think that just will benefit us all it's a grow your own workforce idea and I think is just uh, really important and also the last point on that I really want to make sure that our k-12 system and our junior colleges and four-year college state schools are working well together um, so that we make sure that, that kids have that access, they can move on, and again, grow your own workforce makes sense to me. So what does it mean for you to work for those different kinds of institutions to work together? Well, you know, I know that um, right now, even in, in our high school, we offer some college-based programming but we have to offer it through a community college that actually is in Washington State. And so if we could have a little bit more collaboration, we could actually offer our kids, you know, to go on to a college here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And I know that sometimes that's a real problem. Kids are like, oh, I'm, I've got some college, uh, some college courses already under my belt. And then they go to apply to a four-year college here in Oregon, and, and that college says, oh, or university says, we don't take those credits. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't really make sense to me. We really need to make sure we're working together so that is a smoother transition and, and that those credits count and that work those students have done actually count. Okay. Well, let's stick on, uh, with education. How can the legislature provide stable, adequate, and long-term funding for public education? Yeah. You know, so again, as, a, as the school board chair, um, I do the budget. I help do the budget um, mm -hmm. with the school every year. And, and the key word is stable funding. It is really hard to put in good programming to hire good teachers when you have no idea what your budget is going to be in the next year or the next biennium. And so uh, I think that if we can figure out how to put more stable funding for education, then I think the districts can take more ownership of that and say, okay, we're going to start this program that we think is going to be beneficial. Um, and I think that the way we need to do that, unfortunately, um, 
with 50 and five, we, we limited our, you know, our ability to raise taxes quite a bit. And that was a, a voter, uh, you know, that was something the Oregonians voted on. So again, we have to listen to that. But because of that, we need to be thinking about other ways that we can, we can raise money for education. And for me, I'm really going to look into a restructuring of our taxes, our tax code, and, and actually look into corporations to invest more in education. Again, I really am seeing this model of build your own, grow your own workforce. So I can say to you as a, as a corporation, you want these skilled workers, you want these prepared workers. Let's talk about investing in that education system here in Oregon. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates, the ballot measures, and exercise your right to vote. <laughs>